Steve, can you see my screen okay? Yep. Perfect. Okay, so first, why don't we go ahead and um, briefly introduce ourselves. So I am Kara Welke. I'm creator of Next Level Occupational Therapy, where we help therapists um, start, build, or grow their business, depending on where they're at in their business. And I'm also the owner of Home Therapy Solutions, where we provide um, physical and occupational therapy in people's homes and we do have a clinic um, setting now. We do also have CNA or personal care services. Steve, want to introduce yourself? Yep. Thanks, Kara. Uh, my name is Steve Gluck. I am an occupational therapist and I'm the CEO of HelloNode. It's an EMR system and practice management platform that is suitable for all outpatient, um, Medicare, Part B, private insurance, self-pay insurances. So we built Hello Node from the ground up to make sure that it suits the needs of all business owners, no matter if you're a new business owner or scaling all the way up to many, many clinics to over a hundred or more therapists. So, so we're excited to bring a platform like that built truly by therapists. Um, and I'm one of the designers of Hello Node and we're very receptive to feedback. So, uh, we want to make sure that our platform is suitable for your whatever your needs are. Uh, we can cater to that. So, thank you, Kara. Awesome. And Jerry. Hello. Uh, my name is Jerry Durham. I've been around for a long time. Um, I've been in healthcare for 30, 30 years, going on my 31st year. I am a physiotherapist, physical therapist by training. Yet the last probably 10 years of my, um, in the last 10 years, I created a company called the Client Experience Company that works with healthcare offices to create, shall we say, better experiences or to at least create the experience that the owner wants for their clients to have in their company that starts with the front desk training, matches it up with the provider's work they're doing and um, takes all these things and brings it all together so you can have more happy paying customers. And that's, uh, that's my story. Awesome. And Jerry also has um, the front desk associates that we use um, within our programs, within my business and so forth, which has really been a game changer for a lot of us um, as well. And Steve and I, Steve, I started using HelloNote um, back in 2018 when I started my business. So that's how we first met. So, so let's go ahead and get started. So the objectives tonight um, is really for you guys to determine is starting a private practice a good fit for you. And we're gonna talk about the top five reasons to start a private practice, and then the top five reasons to navigate cautiously. So we're all business owners um, and have been for a while, and we all help therapists start and build private practices. And we 100% want therapists to get out there and start their private practice, but we also really wanna make sure it's a good fit for you guys and to make sure you understand everything that's involved in starting and building a private practice. We see with social media um, that sometimes it's, um, I don't know what the word is, <laughs> glorized. <laughs> it, you know, like it's some this easy thing that you can literally just go start seeing clients and you're going to make money and it's going to, and it's going to be easy. Or you guys all see the Facebook ads, you know, we'll help you start and build your practice in 90 days. You're going to make a hundred thousand in six months or whatever. Um, some of that just gets overwhelmed and overwhelming um, and not really the case. So we like to really kind of dig in to make sure therapists truly understand what is involved with starting and building a private practice. So that's what we'll talk about tonight. Um, so first we'll talk about the top five reasons to start a private practice. Now, I like to get everyone involved in our webinars and I would actually like to hear from you guys first, why do you wanna start a private practice? you guys could put that in the chat section that would be awesome okay. 
while they're putting in the chat section, Steve, why did you start your private practice? Great question. Um, so I don't know if I mentioned it in my introduction, but um, but I'm also a practicing therapist and we do uh, run a mobile uh, clinic as well as an outpatient brick and mortar. And the reason I like to be involved in that is because I know what goes on in this line of business. And this way we can modify and adapt Hello Note to make sure that it suits the needs for, uh, for everyone. So I started my practice, uh, I graduated in 2013 um, as an occupational therapist. I loved it. I got out of school, I went into the workforce and I quickly realized how, how much I was getting burned out with documentation and just following everything I had to do aside from treating patients. Because when you go to school, I'm sure all of us can relate. We became therapists, whether you're physical, occupational speech therapist, we all became a therapist because we wanted to help people, right? We wanted to treat their disability and uh, restore their, uh, their function and put them back into their daily lives. So when you get out and then you start having to document and do billing and all of that, it's not a, it's not a fun road. So that's what I quickly realized in, uh, in my experience. And then talking to other therapists, it was the same same story. So you quickly get burned out. You don't feel appreciated in many places. And then you question why you got into this field. So the, to me, the light at the, of the tunnel was starting your own practice. So I started my own practice because I would have more flexibility of my own time. I can manage the practice and I could set my own rules for myself for my business. And that's also where Hello Note came into play at the same time, because we wanted to make sure that you don't spend hours documenting and billing and so on. So everything is an all-in-one platform. It does majority of the work for you from the logistics side. Of course, you need to manage it. Uh, but yeah, when I started my business, it was a breath of fresh air because I didn't feel like I was getting choked by you know upper management and the not meeting deadlines and productivity. It's 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 not a fun place to be at. And uh, Kara, when, when we met, um, it was, it, it was, uh, I don't want to sound like a, like a Disney story, but it was, it was like the sparks were there because we, we felt, and you're in North Dakota, I'm in New York. Right. And what's awesome is that with the program, with the next level program, it doesn't matter where you are in the U S it works the same way. And we can, we, we helped essentially what over a hundred therapist at this point? Yeah, actually well over 200 when I was counting them the other day. So, right. uh, but that's awesome. But yeah, and this all started Kara in what, 2018 when we met and we put our minds together and it was a model that was still new, right? There were, there's definitely some bigger competitors, but I feel like what you're doing with the program is awesome. And at the right time, because it's still fairly new. And if you notice, I'm sure everyone here, as you said, they've been seeing ads, it's getting more popular. So you don't want to miss the boat because what it means with, with more popularity is more competition, right? And you don't want to get to the point where you have to <clears throat> fight to get patients to recognize you or referral sources to say they already work with someone. So, so yeah, I started my business because of the flexibility and the feeling appreciated. And I wanted to take from my experience and when I hire people I give them the opportunity that I wasn't given to feel valuable and, and noticed and recognized so so that's why I started my business awesome Jerry why did you start your own business no joke um and this is going to be a surprise to many people I didn't I didn't play well with others um I didn't take direction very well I didn't take feedback very well and so right I mean it stems from a lot of what Steve has already shared um uh, right um and by the way what I'm reading in the uh I was reading through the chat comments too right I mean every single person that typed something in I could grab a part of that and go yeah that too that too Right. And and all, all I'm going to say is, uh, yeah, I didn't get along with others. 
I had a problem, you know, I got fired from a job too, right? At a time when right, everybody needed PTs, but they didn't need me. That was for sure. Um, and I earned it. Uh, there was no issue there. I earned that. Um, I, th I thought in, and I think Steve made the distinction too. So I'm going to kind of add on here. You know, there's this world of I can do better, right? With my patients, I can do better serving people, right? Productivity standards, autonomy. I saw this stuff, right? We're talking about autonomy of helping people. And I read through that list of what people want to do. And there's so many awesome things in there. And by the way, everything I read, we could, you know, the world can use today. Um, yet there was this other side, the business side right? Which next level helps you to understand. I have been out now for 30 years. I had my own, I had my own practice for about 18 and a half years and then got out of that. If I look at my journey in 18 and a half years, what, what you can get now from a next level, from next level is you can get what it probably took me a solid 10 years to figure out. And I'm not exaggerating because I, I look back and I'm, I've, I've got no ego around what I had created or what I thought I had created. It didn't have the business structures in place. It didn't have the systems in place. It didn't have the thinking around how to run a business so much as just, I was, I was on the fly and we had multiple offices and I had multiple employees, but I'm going to own for about the first two third, no first third, 40% of that business. I wasn't running a business. So the opportunity to take this world that you want to create, helping the people, the autonomy, and then marry it up, match it up with the business that you're going to need to create your own time. I saw someone saying they want to spend more time with their kids, right? And in order to do that, you're going to have to understand how to run a business. And then that's where next level comes in. So I want, I want people to understand, right? There's this two sides of it. And yes, we can do it better, but can we do this part, right? And this is where having someone like a next level, having a next level is hugely beneficial because it's going to cut down the learning curve. So it's going to save you time. It's going to save you your energy and it's going to save you a boatload of money on the front end. And you'll get to those goals that a lot of you typed in more quickly. It took me a long time to get to where I wanted to get to because I didn't have it. So there's that. Same here. Um, I agree with pretty much everyone in here. The reasons for me starting my business um, that I wanted to do it my way because I was tired of seeing the poor quality of care being provided. Um, I was tired of showing up and being told I needed to see someone for 15 minutes, someone else for 55 minutes. And let's face it, I didn't listen to that anyways, right? Um, and I wanted the flexibility. I just work, I taught full time. So I worked PRN. So when you work PRN, that means you're working the weekends and the holidays and so forth. And I did not want to um, do that anymore because it just always made me sick when I was scheduled to work a Saturday and that would be my kids' basketball tournament. So then I'd have to try to figure out how to adjust and so forth. So, um, so multiple reasons really pushed me into. Um, getting this business started just like you guys. Um, and several of those reasons we're gonna talk about today are you know, some of the top five reasons to start your practice. Um, and like Steve mentioned, over the course of the last, since we've been helping therapists start their practice, it's crazy to see the number of therapists that have started, but also therapists helping other therapists start. The, there's more and more resources out there you do want to be really careful though. Make sure no matter what you do that you always keep full ownership of your business um, and that you know you don't sign up for something where some of them are taking partial ownership of your business. Um, I've been working with AOTA on a few things and we've been seeing some structures like that coming out and therapists not realizing they really aren't even owning their business. So you do want to be cautious about that. Um, but getting into the game sooner than later, because if you don't do it, someone else is going to do it in your area. Um, so the top, and again, these are the kind of the top five that we picked to really focus on today. There are tons of reasons. You guys all said them in the chat section, but we're going to focus on flexibility, freedom, fulfillment, fostering innovation and relationships, and financial potential. So we're talking about the five Fs today.
Let's start with flexibility. Um, so I'm just going to kind of chime on these and then Steve and Jerry will chime in. Um, I personally feel that the flexibility component is one of the greatest components that we can get from starting our own business, not only for ourselves, but also for anyone we employ. So as um, a private practice owner, we have grown from just me to over 20 therapists now. And my therapists are able to set their own schedule and see clients, which works best for them. And I have, you know, the majority are moms. They want to be able to pick up their kids, drop off their kids, not miss any of their kids' events. Um, so the flex, of, they still work their hours, but they do it within a time that works for them as well as still works for their um, clients. But it's not just on um, the flexibility for, I think, the therapist and your or your ther as a therapist time schedule and the people you employ, but it's also the flexibility to do what you feel is best and for you to adjust to the changes in your community and make things happen quicker. So, for example, um, you know, I try to do a lot of the different programmings we're doing now in my business with the healthcare system I built. Anytime you try to do something like that with these big healthcare systems, you have to run through multiple people, right? Or loops in order to get where you want to get. Um, you run the show when you do it yourself. You can do what you want as long as you're within legal um, and legal regulations and compliance and so forth. But it gives you the freedom and flex or the flexibility to really do what's best for the clients. Um, also, you can work with who you want to work with. You can really create the ideal setting for you. So the flexibility is a huge piece. Anything to add on that, Steve or Jerry? Yeah, I mean, everything, I think all the bullet points hit flexibility well. And I, and honestly, let's face it, I'm sure most people, when you ask them, flexibility is probably among the top one that people say is the reason they want to own their business. Because it is true. When you do not own your business, you're following the rules of somebody else. Somebody else is telling you what to do. Now, a lot of you I know are ne uh, we're never business owners, never exposed to business ownership, right? So now think about the fact that with the program, you can become a business owner the right way. When we created our business, all three of us, I'm sure, and many others, five or more years ago, there were no support groups, right? We had to figure things out on our own. And I think Jerry mentioned that. So you know, it, it save your save your time, energy, money, and go with people that are trusted and credible, right? And not just someone that's selling you something. Because I don't believe here. I don't. I don't believe the program is something you're selling, right? I don't think that this next level is like, oh, here, sign up. I think it's a support system, right? And the support system is important to do things properly, to set up your business properly. And we have coaching calls, right? So it's not, it's not like you're, you feel like you're alone. So with flexibility, I think everyone wants that flexibility component. Everyone has a life of their own behind the scenes, and you want that work-life balance, whatever, whatever is important to you. But without running your own business, you do not have work-life balance because somebody else is telling you what to do. And as Kara said, someone else is telling you how much minutes to see a patient or what patient you should see, right? So with the flexibility, you're in control of pretty much every aspect of the business. And I love the fact that when uh, the ones that are in the program, they set their own goals. So your goal could be to see 10 visits per week. Your goal could be to see 20. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you choose what you want to do and what works for you. And I will add, and we'll talk about this when we get to the negatives. For some therapists, having this flexibility can also be a drawback because they really struggle with the time management piece and right. how to focus on what they need to focus on. But we'll get to that um, in a little bit. So um, anyone here 
you can put in the chat section if flexibility is your number one reason for choosing um, to start your own business. Just out of curiosity, we'll see where everyone is at. Um, the next one we'll talk about is fulfillment. Um, so again, I'm from reading through the questions, starting your own business really gives you um, so much fulfillment because you're able to build and grow something that is extremely meaningful for you and those around you. And you're working hard for yourself. Um, like I'll give you an example. When I went to start teaching, um, I ended up literally throwing everything away in the office of the person who taught before me. I mean, I felt it was trash. I started from scratch. I spent you know, literally up in the morning till three or 4 a.m. working on everything. I put my, you know, so much time and energy into that. The problem is that was, it wasn't for me. I mean, when I left, the school wanted to keep everything that I built and created. And also, if you didn't hear my story about when I left, you know, they they were fine getting rid of me and replacing me. Um, no one's going to replace you in your own business, right? Um, and the me the relationships that you have from people is huge. Um, this past week, one of my clients um, passed away, and he was one of my very first clients. And when I went to the funeral, I mean, the family literally treats you like you're their own. And they just went on and on about how we were one of the best parts of their life and really made, you know, everything so much better for them. Um, and you have that ability to create those relationships and really go above and beyond. Um, so for some people, the fulfillment, um, well, Katie said fulfillment is number one. So again, fulfillment is huge, um, but it's fulfillment for yourself and what you're doing for others, but also think of all the different um, positions you can provide for other therapists. I know therapists around, around here, they, I mean, we just had another therapist reach out to me that wants to come work for us. She's miserable where she's at. She doesn't want to be there. Um, they aren't treated the best. They, you know, are just kind of in a rut. We have so many people leaving our profession. So if those of us that have that gift to start a private practice can do it, we can really help the others in our discipline, hopefully renew their love um, for the field as well. So, so fulfillment, it's huge. And if that's a big reason for you guys, um, it's, you can do so much with it. Um, Jerry, Steve, anything to add on fulfillment? I like the, um, I'm a, I'm, I'm a believer in you reap what you sow. And so that if you read that second line, cause that's really it, right? Everybody will tell you, I know everybody on this call is working hard right now, but to what end, right? To what end? And, and this is echoing the conversation here. And I like knowing, look, if, if I get up and I go to work and I do the work, right? That the benefit is from the work I'm doing. I will benefit from it. The people I hire will benefit from it. My community will benefit from it. And if there are days when I don't show up and I choose not to show up, then I'm making a choice also. Again, the choice is yours. Yet when you're doing the work, man, they're, they're, right? there's nothing better, by the way, than being on a webinar at eight o'clock on a, what is today? Mm -hmm. Tuesday? On a Tuesday, Tuesday. right? <laughs> right? Right? And this is part of my business. It's part of sharing um, about Kara's business that's helping people to do all this. So it, it is, it, it, I'm going to tell you, it's a completely different mindset, yet you have to hold yourself. And by the way, this is where the group comes in. Steve was talking about a community, right? Right. It's not just the coaches, it's the other people in the group, because a lot of you during your journey are going to all be having the same problems. And there will be people in the group doing something a little differently that can help you, but you can all problem solve some of those problems out with probably not even needing to talk to a Kara, right? Because you've joined this community. So this whole thing together about working hard and I'm working hard and everybody gets to talk about what they're doing, but who's getting the results too, you know? So all of this working hard for your own business and you reap what you sow is, um, is a big part of this for me. And the by the way, that's on reflection. That's on reflection. 
because <laughs> I'm going to be the person who say early on in my business, I wasn't putting in what I should have been putting in. So there you go. Yeah. And by the way, back to Steve's point, I don't know if anybody saw me, but when I started this, th there was to say there was zero support, like a next level would be an exaggeration. There's probably a negative. There was actually yeah. a negative number. Of a lot of yeah, how many years ago did you yep. start your business? So that business I started in 90, yes, the 90s. And probably some of the people on this call weren't alive then. Um, <clears throat> probably in 96, 97. There was yeah, no one I mean, out there. When I started, but remember, there was no one. But I that was. But that's when I started that. the business. So even think about go back further. There was no one. By the way, it's still funny because the very first book I read was The E Myth, which is still one of the most impactful books on my journey. And it was handed to me by the least, by the person I expected least to hand me a book on entrepreneurship. So I get that was like the one ace in the hole I had was someone handed me the E Myth. That was it. That was my bit. That was my business training. Um, one thing I want to add besides the fulfillment that I thought of when you guys were talking is, um, like, for instance, my family is all kind of part of our business, whether it's my home therapy solutions business, two of my daughters work for my business. William is ready to work for my business as soon as he turns 18. Um, you know, my husband plays a huge role. They both, they all play a role in next level business. Um, so it, it provides fulfillment um, even beyond myself. Um, and I'd say that my therapy manager and my um, business admin and so forth who have been with me the, um, the longest, you know, they take a huge role and it really gives them that personal accomplishment where they're able to do so much and reap the benefits and we can really treat them well. So... Okay. If anyone else's fulfillment is number one, share it below. I like to see where everyone rates um, this. Um, number three, um, this one is really important to me and it's pretty much the whole um, reason that I've been able to be successful with my home therapy solutions business. Um, it's just the fostering of innovation and relationships. I get so extremely frustrated with healthcare systems that do not foster relationships within the community and um, do not collaborate with the community and they're kind of a silo, right? Um, the great part about us starting these private practices is we can really foster much needed relationships and collaboration in the community and really help our clients even more. Um, again, it's not just like we're the only ones that are making a huge difference out there, right? The more we can collaborate and work with others, we can provide everything that the clients need. Um, so establishing and nurturing relationships with clients and community members. Um, working together for the community, creating innovative programs, um, being able to go above and beyond with, you know, we're starting different programs together where, you know, we're doing different types of exercise programs, walking groups, dementia-based programs in the community with all of these agencies working together um, versus the bigger healthcare systems tend to really silo. And I know around here, I don't know if any of you guys deal with this, um, but in some areas like here, they don't allow outside referrals um, to other healthcare or other services that probably are better and could better help their clients. Um, so when we get out, we can actually make a huge impact on the healthcare system and really come back to where we should be in the first place by really fostering that collaboration effort. So Steve, Jerry, anything to add on that one or anyone here um, excited about being able to foster innovation and relationships and work together with others in the community? If that's anyone's excited about in the chat, let me know. I hope everyone's excited to do that because part of business success is fostering relationships and innovation. So, uh, and, and yeah, and, and with what I mentioned before, you know, we didn't have that support system and it was hard to build relationships. Now it's much easier. And now with the program, 
you're getting those relationships brought to you. Um, and I think that's one of the really amazing things about, about social media and the fact that we're even on a Zoom call now with so many of us here is it, just awesome. And it just, it just makes your reach a lot bigger, uh, even though it's farther, it's a lot closer than you having to go to your community and try to get somebody else to give you advice and build relationships because a lot of people out there will not give you good advice. Okay, and that's one of the reasons I know, Carrie, you're doing this webinar is because you have to be careful as well because there's a lot of people out there that A, will not give you anything or B, will give you wrong information. So, and that will lead you down the wrong path. So, so yeah, absolutely. I think this is a really important uh, point. And we have therapists that in their own communities have built up their own private practice support network and group that really help each other. So just because there's other OTs or other PTs in your area that are doing private practices, again, think of that as a way to collaborate and provide better services to the community versus being competitive. Um, we actually, our clinic is within a facility that a group of us kind of created or kind of came to to be by us really talking, collaborating, and we all have little private practice spaces um, within one building, and we can collaborate, refer clients back and forth to each other. So, financial potential. Um, so I think a lot of people want to go into um, starting a private practice because they'll make more money um, or they think they'll make more money. Um, and there is the potential to make money. That's why we put financial potential. Um, but again, you have to be realistic, right, on what you're going to make. And it's going to depend on how you run your business, how you set your business up, what type of business, um, your fee schedules, and so forth. But the other thing to think about is, are you ever really secure where you're at when you're working for someone else? We've had so many therapists come to us that have been let go um, at their current job. They're, they're working for someone else because they think that um, they're secure and making money and they're going to be good there. When actually, when you're working for yourself, you're going to do whatever it takes, right, to make that money, to create a business that's going to support you. Um, and you can't fire, well, you could fire yourself. Some people maybe should fire themselves. But anyways, um, most likely you're not going to fire yourself. Um, so there is great financial potential, but it's also not just with what you can bring in for your business, but it's the business the incentives to owning your own business, the um, you know, the ability to write off a variety of different things that you might not be able to when you don't have your own business. Um, creating once you get started, you might find creative ways to di diversify and create multiple revenue streams. So, so you're in control. So, um, and you have the ability to really to create that um, for yourselves. But you, I mean, you do have to be smart about it. Steve, Jerry, anything you wanna add on the financial potential? You know, something you said, I think, um, <clears throat> you know, to say I'm making this much money now and I wanna make this much money when I start my business. But when you look at that paycheck and see the money going out, the money going out, the money going out, <clears throat> Kara already said this, I'm just echoing it. I think this is really important right, that you now have opportunities because you are a business owner to take, right, to actually, right, really look at what is that take home on this side versus and what's going out versus actually being able to make less money, but actually your take home is the same. So uh, by the way, of which then opportunities grow as the business grows, right, that you get more and more. So, right, coming in, going out, I think it's really important to think about it that way. I'll tell you another one on this financial potential. Let me, let me see what you wrote there. Control your own earnings, but I'll tell you what, <clears throat> I think this might fit here. 
my, I'll tell you, if anybody asked me what was the biggest benefit of owning my own business right after it got bigger, I said, never having to submit. And I know this goes back to freedom, but I still think this sits with, because I was making what I needed to make, right? I had created something that gave me more investments. It gave me more write-offs. I never, ever had to submit a vacation request. So I still tell people to this day, the A number one, and I didn't start my business to take more vacation, but I realized that if I wanted to take time off, I could, right? So no, whether it was a holiday, more time with my wife, we want to go somewhere, you know, whatever it was. And it wasn't that I abused the vacation. It was just, I didn't have to submit a form and wait to get approval on it. And I think that comes back to having that financial freedom and the financial potential of the business again. Because by the way, guess what? <clears throat> when I went on vacation, I came back. By the way, I had no PTO pool. I was the owner. So, and I also got paid when I was off. So I think that kind of follows that path of finding, right? Again, what's the upside of this? Well, I'm making the same amount of money. Yeah, but I can take a week off and I'm still going to get my paycheck and I'm never going to max out my vacation. And you're not burned out and yeah. so forth. And that's where I, I think know. too, and someone said, and like Roxanne, I mean, again, that we, you want to make enough money and be secure. Um, and that is important to people. So, I mean, financial security is huge, right? Um, I, I still remember, and I can like visualize me driving and I'm like, I made more money seeing two people today than I did when I was working at the nursing home, working all day and um, being so excited about it when I first, when I first started. So um, it's, you know, it's just really realistically looking at what you're going to bring in, what you're going to spend um, and think about all the better benefits out of it. We see some people that are maybe making quite a bit of money, like say in home health, but they're running their butts off and they're spending so much time on their own doing documentation and so forth. And I'm like, wouldn't a better work-life balance be better when you're working less, but still making a good amount of money and so forth. So um, anyone here, financial potential, one of your biggest reasons for starting the business. Um, and again, it opens the door to so many other ways to help with your um, finances and so forth. So it's, it's very important. Yeah, I was going to mention that too. It's so, as you said, Kara, you could, you saw, you saw two patients for the same money that you uh, were working with. And, and I'm sure I had the same experience, Jerry, I'm sure you did. And I know everyone else that's in the program that are, that, are seeing their own patients feel the same way. You get to a point and you're like, wow, like this finally paid off now. And that ties back to flexibility because now the you spent half the time seeing the same amount of patients, but your lifestyle cost is still the same. Or if you want to see more patients, great. Now you're making a lot more money than you were before and not getting burned out. So definitely financial potential um, on that. And with what you said, this opens the door for many other opportunities. So if you've never ran a business before, so having a business, just starting your own business, you're gonna learn so much about yourself, about how to make more money, how to scale your business, if that's what your goal is but it's also from yourself and put that into a business right and it's a limitless possibilities so so definitely you're planting a seed for your own investment and i will just add on this there are some great perks as far as like um traveling to go and go to workshops or we, that's why we do next level events because all of our therapy business builder owners can go and get together and have fun and work on their business um, but it also be a tax benefit and deduction as well so there are some perks um, to it depending on how you um, facilitate that so okay so those were the top five reasons that we feel, that we see a lot of other people and ourselves um, for starting their businesses. Now we do want to talk about 
um, the top five reasons to navigate cautiously. Now, I want to say, I mean, all three of us are huge proponents for starting your business. Um, I guess I, like I said before, I just see so much being put on reasons to start your business and that unrealistic, unrealistic standards, standards out, out there. Like you can do this in this amount of time and so forth that we want to make sure you guys are educated and really thinking about the steps moving forward. So um, top five reasons, and these are things we see day in and day out um, of therapists who start their business and never make it past the first few months or the first year or, or two with their business. So um, regulation and compliance, investment, system struggle, uncertainty, and economy. So we'll talk about these. Regulations and compliance. So this is one of the biggest ones for me. Um, and and again, it, this probably bothers me the most just because I'm kind of a role follower and want things to be set up appropriately. And when I see this poor advice being provided out there um, and know that it can really set someone up for failure and huge expenses if something would um, come back um, on them, it's, it's really frustrating. So with healthcare businesses, especially, there are lots of um, things that we need to understand in regards to compliance and regulations. And the fact that we are licensed healthcare professionals, there are certain things we can and cannot do that, you know, you can't just all of a sudden throw away your degree and say you're no longer licensed and so forth. So you do have to be careful with that. Um, there are some great local and state resources. The Small Business Association has lots of great resources. Um, SCORE, there's you know different resources available. The problem with a lot of those is they don't understand healthcare rules and regulations. Um, and that's a key component. Even a lot of attorneys that help people start their business aren't familiar with the rules and regulations when it comes to healthcare and compliance. So you, if you're going to get into this and start this, you need to figure out a way um, and make sure that you are aware of, you know, any legal issues and compliance challenges, both federal um, and state regulations. And with healthcare practices, there's more for us to think about than just, you know, starting up a stand selling socks and shoes. I don't know why that came. I couldn't think of anything else. So that's one of the biggest things that I like to forewarn people about. So anyone that's on the chat, you know, dug into any of the regulations and compliance that you guys have to take into account when you're starting and building your business, feel free to write in the um, chat. Um, Steve, Jerry, anything to add on to this? I mean, I know, Steve, you deal with this every day with your EMR because you have to make sure that everything follows so therapists can be compliant with their documentation and so forth. So, Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we have to be compliant as therapists. And from, from our side of HelloNote, we have to make sure we're HIPAA compliant from the software perspective. So, so everything is built out to protect everyone to make sure, you know, your data is safe. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's many security measures in place from our side. So yeah, uh, but again, you have to know this, right? So if you're just jumping into a business just to jump in without any guidance, you are definitely going to miss a lot of these points. And you don't want to, you don't want to mess around and find out, uh, you know, so it's better to have you know, the right things in place and the support team in place to tell you what you're doing correctly, what you should be doing differently. So this way you're ensuring your business for success. Some of the mo most common things we see is um, therapists trying to do a cash-based practice um, when their client population is Medicare. Um, so you have to be careful with that. Um, and it's really interesting if you guys really start digging into this and follow some of the big cash-based programs or gurus, 
you will notice that they are now promoting more hybrid approaches than just cash-based approaches. So that shift is, is shifting um, to, because it's really hardly feasible to do a cash-based practice with older adult population. Another big one that I see out there is misclassification of um, employees versus independent contractors. You got to be really careful with that. We've gone through an audit and that was um, was really good. Um, and um, or we went through an audit and we passed because we had everything together, but I know many people wouldn't pass um, with that. Um, and yeah, even, I mean, it'll be interesting, Laura, you'll have to let us know how it goes because um, attorneys, even in hospital systems, they don't usually understand outpatient Medicare compliance and so forth. That's where having the people that are experts in the compliant side of things for your particular practice is really important. I mean, we could not, we didn't find anyone locally that um, were comfortable with that. That's where we kind of had to bring the team in nationally to find the compliance experts in this area. And things change every year, right? So we're coming up to January 1st, all new regulations coming into place. Every October, there's new changes that come out. So there's a lot of things that you need to um, keep up in. But yeah, I'd say cash-based practices, Medicare, um, telehealth tends to be a struggle for some people. Um, and then not, not classifying employees correctly are probably the biggest mistakes I see. Steve, any other big errors we see? Bill, yeah, you mentioned like the, the Medicare cash. Um, there's also the prompt paid discount, which I know is yeah. always big. Uh, yeah, topic. fee schedules, people having multiple fee schedules, not consistent fee schedules. That is you know, there. So, um, and again, there's resources out there now. When we started our business, there were not resources available to us. Um, I made very costly errors um, when I started my business. So utilize the resources that are available to you. Don't try to do it on your own. It's not worth it for the our type of practices, especially with some of the fines um, that are in place. Um, Looking at like the Office of Inspector General, OIG, if you go to their website and looking into um, some of the stark rules and regulations, things like that would be important as well. So that's probably my number one. Um, and then um, number two is investment. I will tell you that I'd say, Steve and Jared, be interested in hearing your um, thing, but your percentage, but I would estimate with all of the people that we have helped start and build their practice, 90% of them at least underestimate the investment of time that it really takes and the investment of energy it takes. And even, um, you know, being willing to put the financial component into it to getting things set up right from the start. Um, and yeah, time is probably the biggest one. And that's where I really kind of get mad when I see these programs saying, you know, it's only going to take this much to start and see your clients and so forth. You guys, it takes a lot of time and effort into doing this. And you have to be will you have to be willing to be told no or not have success and stop and not let that stop you and keep going. So you have to be able to keep that dedication and being relentless and so forth. So there is a huge investment, more time and energy, and um, you gotta be willing to put the right pieces in place financially. And it doesn't have to be a huge investment. I will say starting a mobile practice is literally the best practice to start with because it hardly costs you anything. Steve, Jerry, do you guys, what do you guys think with the underestimation of how much time it actually takes to put in? I underestimated time <clears throat> and then not. So here's the thing. If you spend money and lose it, you can make it back. <clears throat> if you spend a lot of energy, you can sleep in, right? You can get it back. If you mess up the time part, you never get it back. So, and I heard Kara and I think this is something really important because I didn't understand this again until I was way far in my journey, right? So 
spending money on something that will give you time, and we've all alluded to this at some point or another around this, spending money on something that will give you time is the best investment you can make, right? Because exactly. Again, right? It, it, right? You can, uh, I'm just going to say this in this way, you can speed time up, right? So again, I'm telling you, it took me eight to 10 years to figure out how to run a business, right? Just think about if I could have taken two years off of that, what I could have reaped. Again, I reap what I sow, right? So, right. So every year you could have given me back on that. What would have been the ROI if I had the opportunity, right, to invest in business coaching, in business, in business mentoring? Because that's finally what I had to do, but I didn't realize it at the time. And once I got it, it sped things up insanely. So that's well, the thing you think either. you never get that time back, right? No. I mean, I didn't invest in business coaching, although I will have to say I couldn't find anything to invest in. Well, yeah, yeah and, and <laughs> I'm kind of taking that, you know, I didn't know what I didn't know at the yep. time, right? Yep. Right. Yeah. But you guys are already a step ahead of so many people because you're you're looking for resources. You're, here, you're, looking, you're looking for help. Right? You're here. Right. And um, by the way, I, I want to so, congratulate everybody for being here and saying, I need to get more information. Yeah, because the people that don't are the ones that we see don't make it, you know. So and again, I mean, I will say that I made many costly errors. And like um, you said here, Roxanne, is it is difficult to change and it takes a lot more time and effort going back um, before the pandemic. We actually um, couldn't utilize OTAs and PTAs in mobile practices. Um, and who were two of the people I hired first, you guys, an OTA and a PTA. I mean, I had to let them go within, I mean, I don't know how long of hiring them because I didn't know. But when you go through social media, the stuff you read isn't correct. So, um, yeah, I would give anything to have more more resources for it. So just be prepared because I don't want you to say in three months, six months, one year, this is taking too much time and energy because it's going to take a ton um, when you're doing it. Um, systems, systems struggle. I'm still working on improving my systems and the systems we have in place now, I would give anything if we could have had those systems when we first started. Um, so what we see is the lack of knowledge about all the different systems needed to be successful, the refusal or lack of knowledge to actually implement systems, the complexity of managing day-to-day -day operation, um, balancing various aspects, administrative versus treatment versus marketing. And we have live examples that literally Jerry and I were just texting back and forth today. So we have two new therapists that are fairly new and starting their businesses, both having clients, um, several leads coming in. They can't do it all. They're already feeling burnt out, struggling, and so forth. You have to get the systems in place and you have to know when to bring on additional staff, when to bring on additional help, when to use your additional resources. And if you can set that up from the start and be prepared to do that, it can be a huge game changer for you. Um, so growing too fast can actually be worse than growing too slow. Um, we see that all the time. Um, so yeah, having good solid systems in place is huge. And I will also be the first to say for the first three, four years, and I've only been in practice since 2018, I was, everyone always said they need systems. And I'm like, what systems? I need systems in place. But I had no idea what systems I needed in place or how to do it. And um, then finally, I met um, Chad and Anthony, and now they have all my systems in place where things just do everything automatically, and it's just amazing. Um, so, so again, um, you know, we're telling you now there are extremely powerful systems that you can put in place immediately when you're starting your business. That's going to be a game changer, and it's going to save you time, money, and a lot of energy down the road. Um, 
So don't refuse to implement the appropriate systems from the start. Steve, Jerry, anything to add on that one? I mean, I'm a systems person. Uh, so Hello Node is one big system. And, uh, and yeah, it has so many tools to allow you to run your business without spending that time. Because without those systems, all of that is manual labor. All right, I'll, I'll just give one example. Uh, appointment reminders, right? You don't have to call your patients to make sure that they're going to be ready for your appointment. The system does it for you, right? So things like that. And some, some of the systems that are in place, you don't even realize how much time it actually saves you. You know, you take a lot of the systems we have and you take it for granted because if you take that away, you're going to now have to either do it yourself or hire somebody to do that. So, so yeah, systems are definitely important. And that goes right back into the last uh, component with time because the more efficient your systems are, the more time you free up for yourself. And every minute you free up for yourself is more potential for you to grow your business, right? So, so systems are extremely important. And you know, this goes to what we've been saying from the beginning is that everything in the program is given to you, is handed to you and trained. We train you on it. So, and if there's questions, we're here to answer it. So it's, it's what I love about the program. Uh, you're, not, you're, not, you're not getting, like I've, I've seen some other programs, it's like, you know, pay this and they send you a PDF. Right. And uh, you're responsible to read it and figure things out on your own. And chances are you're just not going to do anything. You're going to pay for it, download it. It's going to sit on your computer. And then a year goes by, two years, you, you didn't do anything with it. So, so honestly, the time is now. If you're here and you're interested and you don't have to go quick with starting your own business, you could take it at your own pace. And I'm a believer in that because I've seen other practitioners that jump into it. And then they want to do everything all at once. Every single, and Kara, Jerry, I know you know where, what I'm talking about. They, you know, you get so excited and you just do everything. You want to learn everything all at once. And that is the wrong approach. And that's what you did, Jerry. Uh, so, so yeah, you could take it at your own pace and we are here to, to grow with you and adapt to whichever timeline that is good for you. It might, you know, it, there's no competition here. At the end of the day, we want you to be successful. And that's the end goal is the success, not the time it takes you to be successful. So of course there are timelines we have to set, otherwise you're just not gonna commit to anything, but essentially it's at your own pace and we will work with you to make sure that you learn what you need to learn and do it at the right time. And I'll just add in here, I don't know what you said that made me think about it, but it's also, with the systems also comes with knowing what to spend your money on and what not. Like we've seen people spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on um, on a website when realistically, when you're first getting your business up and going, you don't need a website. Trust me, that's not where you should put your time, money, effort, and so forth. So it's knowing the best place to put it. Um, that money, your time and effort, and knowing what kind of system you actually need in place to make sure you're tracking your clients, keeping your clients, following up with those clients and so forth. So um, so that's a huge one. And with our therapists that we work with that already have businesses, this is one of the biggest things that we have to help them get in place because many people come and they don't have it. And once they get it in place, it's like they've gained gained hours and hours back. Yeah. Uncertainty. Um, so we see this a ton. Um, you know, stress of not knowing how to handle situations, fear of failure, emotional stress, concerns about financial stability. Um, you know, struggling with being able to manage the ups and downs, concerns with the market and the future of healthcare. Just be prepared that there's ups and downs when you own your own business. And still to this day, I have those, I have those days. I mean, I know those of you have heard me talk before, heard me say this, but I multiple times a year, I talk about how I need to 
sell both businesses. I'm done. I can't do it anymore. It's just too much. You know, I'm, I'm up to, I think almost 500. My husband tells me of how many times I've said I needed to stop this. Um, cause you're going to have those days. You're going to have days where you worry you don't have enough referrals. You're going to have days you where you have too many referrals. You're going to have days that you're worried about your income for this month. Um, so you do have to be able to handle um, the uncertainty and stress. And the a huge key is, is surround yourself with people that are doing what you're doing and build that support system. Um, like with, like with our program, you know, that's one of the biggest benefits of it because we're all doing the same thing. We all know what's going on. Um, you know, one of our therapists that, I was talking about that's fairly new. Well, she's growing so fast and having so many people and dealing with insurance companies and so forth. It's really stressing her out. And that's where, you know, I'm like, Jerry, we need to get one of our front desk associates in there working with her to take this load off of her. And that's going to really help with bringing her stress down and allowing her to grow her business. Um, so be prepared that you're going to have lots of ups and downs. Um, with your own private practice. That's my husband standing in the door, shaking his head. <laughs> Love it. By the way, <clears throat> I just want to, right? This uncertainty, you have to be okay with uncertainty, right? Because as you get bigger, bigger and as you scale up, I'm going to tell you this, you trade one problem for another. And by the way, a thousand dollar payroll in year two becomes a $5,000 payroll in year three, right, a month. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I got to put out $10,000 a month in payroll, right? So your problems get extra zeros behind them. I'm not going to lie. So, but doing a lot of the work that Kara has alluded to early on will, will help you to understand those problems, but you're still going to have the problems. So you're going to have to, you're going to have to be okay with uncertainty and not, you can't, you're going to, right, understand what you can control and not control, but you're going to have to be okay with that. And, and I'm just, because our problem, the yeah. coolest thing about, I'll tell you, the coolest thing was when my problems got really big, I thought I had the biggest problems everywhere. And we finally found a business group and I found a business coach, right? Like eight years in, I joined a business group. <clears throat> I'm sitting in a community of people. We're all like-minded business owners, not necessarily healthcare. I found out everybody else, there was someone else in the room who had two zeros on the end of the problem I had. So part of it was sitting in there going, okay. Right. I was like, okay, this isn't as, I mean, it's still, but I still got to learn how to manage this and take care of it. But I'm sitting across from someone who's talking about not making a hundred thousand dollar payroll. No kidding. And I tell you again, it just, it brought me back down and it's like, cool. We're all here to help each other solve problems. And I'm like, this guy's got more reason. He's probably going to have more strategies on how to help solve the problem than I would because he's got a bigger problem to solve. So again, they get bigger, but join you know make sure and you're in a community of people make sure you're getting the information you need as you move along i'll never forget that sitting across from someone thinking they were going to miss a hundred thousand dollar payroll and it i mean but honestly it does make you feel a little bit better when you can share with other people that are going through the same things and have had the same issues that you've had and you know you're not alone um right and, and you're gonna right. use those experiences to improve you are a hundred percent. So yes, that, I mean, I sat in the room going, cool. I'm not the only one. So I can learn from these people. That was it. That was the yep. biggest. Yeah. And there's so many more of us doing this now, um, that again, there's that support system out there, um, to really help you guys. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've had so many ups and downs with our business with growth and then not enough therapists and then too many therapists. And, you know, there's always something I'm like, can't we just go one week without one issue? <laughs> so anyways, oh, I know, I know. Um, okay. Last one, I think, um, is economy. So, again, you know, our surrounding economy can we have to be obviously attuned to the economy and what's going on and that it can and this will we'll talk about your question katie um and how can, that can influence us because as i personally think that as small business private practice healthcare businesses 
we have a very difficult position, especially where we're in a community that have these big healthcare systems. Because a lot of these big healthcare systems, let's face it, they rule the community. Um, and you have to be willing to get out there and not give up. I mean, I will tell you that, you know, we've had we've had clients call and fire their doctors because they said that they won't refer to us or outside and our our clients will say, fine, we're going to do another doctor. Um, we I call and report anytime we have issues with getting information on people to the hospital. Um, you just have to be relentless. We also know that, um, you know, health insurance, dealing with health insurance, whether you're out of network or you're credentialed with someone, you know, that can be a struggle. You have to be prepared that that's what you're going to do to, you know, when you're getting into this world. Um, employment, the labor and market is, is crazy. Um, a lot of therapists are tired of being therapists because they've been treated like crap and don't want to do it anymore. And they're not, you know, so it's hard to find therapists in some areas. Changes in technology for old people like me that aren't very um, tech savvy, utilizing some of these things can be difficult. I remember um, the um, one of the first times I started working in, on like, the system and websites and so forth. And I'm like, okay, I cannot do this. You know, much better just to hire someone to do that kind of stuff for me than me do it. Um, and I think social media is a huge, can be a huge problem because again, like we said earlier, it really, there's lots of very negative things out there, but there's um, positive things, but there's misleading things and that can impact your business as well. So um, a variety of things in our economy that you have to be prepared to deal with. Um, yeah, anything to add, Steve and Jerry to that? Okay. Okay, so now I wanted to share this article before we kind of have our closing and, and then answer your guys' questions. <clears throat> and the reason I'm sharing this is because I don't know how it literally... I found it today, and I don't know how I found it today, but it's like it fit really well um, in our presentation topic. So the article is titled, How to Know If You Are Cut Out for Entrepreneurship, and it was from October of 23, and I put the link in there, but it said to ask yourself these four questions. One, are you okay working alone? Because starting your own business can be very isolating, right? Because um, you're not working around others, um, going to a work environment, you know, you're doing a lot of things on your own. Two, can you take initiative, but also, um, I can never say that word, give up your control. So you need to take initiative and be consistent, but you must know when to delegate. And we see people struggle with that a ton because they've built this business they need to be the ones that are seeing the clients. They need to be ones doing everything and, and not delegating can really cause um, problems. Also, um, they talked in there on taking initiative um, and not giving up control is having a saving mindset by say, thinking you can save more money by doing it yourself can actually cost you more in the long run. Um, three, is your idea a need to have or a nice to have? And then they talked about how most successful or most successful is for products and services that solve a problem people encounter. Now, I will tell you the majority of our practices and things that you guys want to do, um, just out of curiosity, write in the chat what you guys want to do. Um, but those of you that want to work with older adults, those of you that want to do women's health, those of you know are huge. There's a huge need. It's not going anywhere. There's a huge lack of it. Um, so there's definitely a need for what we want to provide out there. Um, and then the fourth question was, can you support yourself if you make no money for a few years and it takes time to build a business? I will say I was telling Steve and Jerry that one um, I don't necessarily agree with because when you start a mobile hybrid practice, it's literally 
you can start making money your first year. I remember my first year, I went into my accountant and they couldn't believe it was my first year I made a business because she's like, new businesses usually lose money the first few years. Um, but with what we make and the limited financial cost, you know, you can start making money um, earlier. So, so again, this article kind of hit home because it did talk about a lot of the things that we talked about today. And it also said, seek help before you begin. The smartest entrepreneurs will, oh, spelling mistake, will find mentors, advisors, and coaches to help. So even if you don't utilize the programs we have, find someone, but make sure it's a good fit because there's lots of people out there that are doing things that aren't the greatest. We had a, a Oh, it's been a couple of years now where we had a situation where there was a program that kind of took several, oh gosh, it's in the 50s, 60s therapist. Um, so you do have to be, you do really have to do your due diligence um, in who you decide to help you with growing your practice. So, um, so what will your path be? Are you going to look at starting a private practice as a big roadblock um, or are you going to look at it as a way up um, to what you can do for bigger and better things for yourself so we'll answer your questions um, and then we have additional resources for any of you guys that are interested so um, one question we had was do you feel there is any concern about regulations of medicare restricting home-based services under part b Working in an outpatient clinic, this is an idea that gets tossed around, but I wonder if there's any merit or just outpatient clinics being possessive of the benefit. Um, definitely no. Medicare Part B outpatient services in the home is only growing and getting more and more. And this is where, I mean, this is where we should be for the geriatric population in the first place. Um, but I have absolutely no concern with with um, that going away. Steve, do you have any concerns with that? Uh, nope, I don't have any concerns with that going away. It's only, as you said, growing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm wondering, maybe they're talking about maybe something about Part A, uh, but in the Part B outpatient, it's it's not going away and there's so much benefit to it. So I I don't have any concern of it going away at all. And I will say when you do, so Steve and I both have done mobile outpatient Part B for a long time. Um, and still to this date, it takes a lot of education to people in the community about what we do and how we're different than home health. People don't get it. And even people we've been working with for years still don't fully get it. So it takes a lot of education um, on that topic. Another question we have is, um, I am a COTA with no business background. Can you please advise as to where someone in my situation can start? First of all, I think it's awesome um, that you want to start a business. And we are huge advocates for OTAs in starting their own businesses. Um, we've actu we actually had an OTA reach out that wanted to do a home modification business and was told by an OT that... Um, OTAs cannot start home modification businesses, which again is is crap. You can start and build your own business. You just have to make sure you're following the rules and regulations and the licensure requirements, right? Um, so um, we have um, tons of resources on our YouTube channel. Um, we have tons of handouts for you. We have tons of webinars over the past, you know, several years that we've done. We have therapy business builder program that we help therapists start and build their practices. Um, we have, you know, just a ton of resources out there. But again, um, there's other therapy, there's other people that are helping people as well. Obviously, we're biased that we um, are excited. We've been doing this for a long time and enjoy helping therapists start their business. So, um, but yeah, we have tons of resources out there um, that you can utilize and help with this. As far as any suggestions for great resources regarding regulations and compliance for OTs starting out their mobile business, again, um, completely biased <laughs> with this is um, with, that's what we do. We've all had mobile practices. We help therapists start and build their mobile practice. And we have regulations and compliance and the policies and procedures. 
manual um, and we have a compliance expert that comes in and does um, teaching and auditing and so forth on a regular basis. Um, but outside of us, I would definitely recommend going to the OIG website and reviewing what they have. Um, Rick Kawanda, Nancy Beckley are great resources um, as well. Making sure you know and understand the Medicare compliance um, manual or the Medicare manual is important um, for where you want to get started with that. Again, try to find, you know, coaches that actually are doing what you guys want to do um, because all practices are not equal. Um, you know, especially cash-based practices um, that are helping therapists start cash-based businesses. We've had a lot of people end up coming our way from there because they're not getting the rules and regulations that help them with that insurance aspect, which is huge. What other questions do you guys have? Um, anything pertaining to starting a practice, um, please ask. Um, Someone wants to start a mobile hybrid practice, um, neurological specialist and lymphedema therapist. Um, that's awesome. That's a great fit. We have quite a few lymphedema therapists that are just doing lymphedema mobile practices. Um, we have some that are doing lymphedema um, practices in a clinic. We also have therapists that are doing just neurological practices as well. Now, uh, let's see. Um, as far as there is a comment about being um, worried about being compliant, protecting yourself, again, all of the resources and information that you guys need is out there. Um, it's just being willing to invest and get things set up from the start, and it's going to save you so much time and money and effort in the long run. Um, but many of you will choose just to try to do it on your own, and then in a couple of years from now, most likely you'll wish you probably would have used some resources. That's only because um, we um, see that on a, on a regular basis, right? As far as our program, so yeah, our therapy business builder program, um, we have, when we first started, we had one big program where it was like a year program. Um, and then we've changed and adapted it over the last several years. Um, and our program actually includes your EMR, your system setup, um, access to virtual assistants or front desk associates, um, marketing experts, um, everything that you really need to start and build your business. Um, so it starts at $4.99 a month. Um, but again, that includes all, all of that. What other questions do you have? What's the biggest thing that you guys are scared about when starting a business or why haven't you started a business yet? What's holding you back? Anyone want to share? Laura says, I think my vision is too big. So give us an example, Laura, um, what, what you feel as far as your vision is too big. I'm going to disagree with her before she even types it. <laughs> <clears throat> um, someone asked, said they just got their PLLC and don't know how to begin. Um, I will tell you guys make sure that you are getting your business um, set up appropriately from the start. Some states require LLCs, some states require PLCs, some states require um, professional corporations. Um, some states, if you want to add on like a physical therapist, when you're an occupational therapy practice, you have to have a certain business structure. So something to think about. Um, in regards to community wellness, Laura, can you provide us a little uh, more detail on that? Um, 
tomorrow night, we actually are doing a webinar for all of the therapists that are already have a business. And we're talking about the five um, things that you have to have in place and that will really help your business grow in 2024. Um, one thing we will be talking about is that the ability to focus and know your niche um, and um, really be able to to be comfortable with what kind of who your avatar is. So we'll we definitely will talk um, more about that. Um, so I did put a link to our application in there. Um, what that is, is literally just telling us about you and what you want to do. And we sit down and talk um, then, and then we sit down and have a conversation with you to see if you're even a good fit for us or if we're a good fit from you, um, for you and really explain the process of how, how we do things. Um, so for those of you guys that are interested in, in having that help, um, definitely something to do. We do not pressure anyone here. In fact, probably way more on the other side of things. Um, so in if you want to get specifics into states and so forth, if you want to just email us, um, email me, here's my information. Next, Our Next Level OT website has a lot of resources. And feel free to email me and we can um, help with a lot of that. Um, and, and yeah, I again, I would be cautious with, um, I'm not a fan of legal zoom and some of those other places only because we have had therapists come to us and they have a business structure set up and they've had to start all over from scratch because when it comes to healthcare and PT and OT services, some of the states have, um, different regulations that legal zoom didn't necessarily catch i mean from the most part you're probably okay there's just a few states mm -hmm. that um are difficult hey, i'm gonna chime in because laura put her vision in there and all i'm gonna say laura that's not too big that's what exactly what a vision should be <clears throat> take what you know today start with that and start building that vision out that's the whole idea with having a vision right it, it doesn't have to be, a, it's not a moving target, but it should be something you're constantly working towards, right? And it's not always just serving a million people because I like, I like that vision. And I think that's a great vision for the future. And I think that's a great solution for a lot of communities, right? To have the resources, Kara talked about that resources, right? Building community resources. So you start, if you're an OT, I'm sorry, I don't know if you're, which of those services you are, but I'm just going to start with what you typed in first. Start the OT portion of it and start to build it out with this idea that I want to plug in this other stuff. Because back to this is your vision, you may find you're better off contracting with people in your community who already have existing businesses, or you may decide to hire all of your own, but you're not going to know that until you do what you do, do it well, build that. And as you're building that and building the systems and everything Karen talked about, then you'll know how you want to add the next part, the next part, the next part. So that's a great vision. That's, and that's what I assume. You just had something big. That's what you need. It's not too big, but you can start that today. And I will say, and I, and Laura, don't take this to mean your personal training cert, but it just made me think about this. Um, we have a lot of therapists that think they need to go out and get additional certifications. Yes. Um, like we see the home mod certifications, the, um, oh, what are some other, like the caps and some of that stuff that doesn't even ever help them, or they need to go get Parkinson's wellness recovery trained or the skills to care and so forth. Have them regret it after the fact. Go get your business started, start working with your clients, and then you're going to see what your need is. When I started my business, I started with my general goal of older adults in the community, and that helped guide me and led me to where I needed to go. And after some time working with my community, there was a huge need. I had so many clients with Parkinson's and I ended up going getting my Parkinson's wellness recovery training. And I utilized that a ton. Then I ended up um, going and getting 
We had so many clients with dementia and I focused more training on that. Um, but don't let taking all these courses or trainings or stuff hold you back um, because you are already have so many skills than the majority of the people out there doing these businesses that you don't need any other certifications or trainings and you're spending all this money when you don't need to. Um, so something to think about with that. Um, and Katie mentioned up here that, um, and some people agreed with her, fear is huge. And yes, we see that a lot the lull of financial consistency and burden that can put on my family. Um, so I will tell you when I started my practice, um, I, re you know, I didn't, I refused to invest or do anything. But again, like I mentioned, there wasn't anything to invest in. One of my first coaching programs I invested in was $30,000. I mean, we don't, we don't charge or would never charge Holy anything. Lord. I know we would not charge or ever do anything, <clears throat> but I made damn sure, excuse my language, that I got my money's worth and way more by doing, by doing that, um, out there. So when you are starting and building your own practice and you're in control, you're going to do what it, you need to do to make that money and build a successful practice. Um, and that fear sometimes pushes you into doing it. Same thing. Um, my th This was a few years ago um, when we would start to get low on referrals, I would kind of freak out. And then I would all of a sudden go and start calling people and, and checking in on them and whatever. And, and, yeah, I, you have to be careful when you go and call people because some things might have changed. And Cheyenne's like, Kara, you can't just go and start calling people. Talk to me first. So-and-so passed away and you didn't know that and so forth. But I got so fear-driven that I just started calling anyone and everyone um, out of there. But um, it's a common common occurrence, um, but it also can really push you to making it successful as well. Steve, Jerry, anything to add for those that do have that fear and worried about the financial consistency and burden? Yeah, it's part of, uh, I feel like every business journey, um, everyone, no matter how big you are, small, you're always going to have problems. As Jerry said before, your problems will just multiply. Um, but what I love love, love about having, especially a mobile based business is that there's such a low overhead and you can create your own goal and your goal, your first goal should not be huge, right? You can have a big vision, right? So there's no is uh, issue like Laura with what you said with your vision. And I agree with Jerry. I don't, I, th I think it's definitely doable, but I think you have to set goals for yourself because if your first goal is to do all of that, you're going to get overwhelmed if things don't work out because remember you have so many different facets over there. So you're going to want all of them to have referrals. You want to hire all of those practitioners. So you don't want to start with that. So set yourself up with for success by making smaller goals as therapists, you know, we set up goals for our patients. So we have to set up goals for our business as well. And that believe me will drive the fear down because you're going to see that you're hitting your goals and benchmarks, and that's going to drive you to push forward to reach higher goals. Yes, 100%, 100%. Um, Katie said, should we have an LLC established prior to coming to you, or do you think it's best to wait to assure we are creating things um, accurately? Um, I mean, ultimately, it's we like it when people come to us and we can make sure that they're starting <clears throat> right from the start because even the name you choose with your business um is going to have a huge impact moving forward and there's some things you need to think about when you're selecting that so the sooner the people to start um the better and um we can actually move people through um that whole stage rather quickly but we help people in all stages of their business growth um we do have a lot i Put a variety of other um, resources here that you can use to download, whether it's a private practice checklist, webinars, um, podcasts, other resources to check things out. So um, 
What do you recommend with starting a business with a niche area such as maternal health, lactation, infant feeding? Huge. Um, I mean, yeah, there's a <clears throat> huge, huge need for that. Um, and <clears throat> we have, um, I can connect you if you want to email me with some um, other therapists that are working in that area and some coaches that help therapists in that area. Um, so, you know, there's... And that's the one thing, if we're not the right fit for you guys, we will tell you, I mean, there's going to be other coaches and so forth that might be a better fit for you in some of these other areas. So, um, but this is a huge area. In fact, we added on um, women's health. Oh, it's been a year and a half, I think. Um, and that's been a huge area for us. And anyone who's interested in women's health, 100% recommend it. Um, but one of our OT's goals is to really start to work on the um, more of the maternal health, lactation, infant feeding side of things to add on to that component of the pelvic health side of things. So um, huge area, definitely a great area to go into. There's 15 women on this call. I just looked right now. I'm going to tell you right now, if I... People ask me this about once a week. <clears throat> if I was going to start a new practice tomorrow, it would be a women's health business. And I would start it tomorrow. And I said women's health, right? Which is broad. And you, Kara, kind of, we're talking niche down. <clears throat> and I'm working on a project with someone currently in the women's health side and serving women's health and looking at all of that. I, and by the way, I saw that more from more than just one person in the chat. It's pretty funny, right? Because <clears throat> you're thinking about a niche. and you, Well, right? People go, a niche. And I go, half of the population? How's that for a niche, <laughs> right? I'm like, right? Uh, yeah, huge, huge. Anything in that site, I think, is going to to blow up. It's going to blow up more. Sorry. It's been blowing up. It's going to it's going to continue. Oh, yeah. There's just, it's going to continue. It is such a huge need. I will tell you that our women's health therapists <clears throat> have, you know, massive waiting list oh every one of them are we slammed. haven't even begun to reach all the people that really need those services so and back to your example of the health clinics in your communities i guarantee you they cannot get in there for months mm -hmm. for months and these and are people i'm just going to say this in a way I'm, I'm not telling you this isn't about cash pay in network out of network these are people who are looking for resources and will find a way to get the help they need and and so I'm not saying you you set up a cash practice for them. I'm telling you, set up a business to serve these people in a way that they're not currently being served, and you will be you will be setting up a business, right? We talk about Laura's vision. You know, you think about a vision to help 50% of the population, right? Think about that vision. Yeah. Right? And you start with one one person at a time, and then keep building the resources. The person I'm working with. We're looking at doing exactly what Kara said. We're going out. We're not going to hire a bunch of people. And you don't want me as your boss. I'm a jackass. I'm like, I used to tell everybody about that. You know, who's the boss? I'd say, well, I got good news and bad news. I said, my boss is an asshole and I know him well. But, but <clears throat> we're going out and we're creating a resources, right? We're, re we're creating a resource community and we're going to contract with everybody. And because we're going to bring so many, what, half the population, right, into this group, right? And then these resources will want access. So we won't have to hire these people. So again, all those things you've talked about, Kara, with building this business, building community, you know, community. And by the way, a community doesn't have to be bigger than the city you live in. Your community could be two cities over. Your community could be your state. That's the beauty of licensing, right? Your community could be your whole state. So again, how you guys are thinking about this stuff and right and using this as an example, because everything Kara talked about falls into this women's health section and how you can be in demand. By the way, yes, the person I'm starting this business with is a female, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, great. I mean, any business, most any business for geriatrics is going to be huge. Women's yeah, health business, I saw that too. huge right. geriatrics. I'd put um, that, I would put that yeah. on top women's health. 
geriatrics, all the stuff I saw on that list. Yeah. And genuinely, I, I reading through that list, the community, uh, the even Lori, your vision, right? People, once you build a relationship with them, they'll never freaking leave. That's the best business model on the face of the earth, Laura, right? Yeah. They come to you for OTPT speech. Well, they, right now you have other services, by the way, maybe non-licensed services, right? Like you said, per, you were getting your personal training, but maybe you partner with a gym, right? And you give people access to that gym, but they're your client, right? This is the world. This is the world. You don't want people to leave your, what I call your ecosystem. Right. And, yeah, for sure. And, right. And so much of what Kara talked about during all this was all of this. So how do you start this? Right. And you all have big visions, but how do you get the corporate docs together? How do you make sure you're in compliance to start doing this? Oh, I did this wrong for so freaking long. My friends. <laughs> Not all of us. Okay, I know it's getting late, especially for those of you on the East Coast. I don't know what coast are you on this time, Jerry. I'm on the 937 East okay. Coast. That's okay. a, or sorry, 937 Coast. I'll be on okay. the I'll be three hours the other way okay. by Saturday night. Okay. Jerry <laughs> lives and in, in extremes. Um yeah, I mean it's right, it's both coasts. I can see the Atlantic, I go home, I look at the Pacific. Yeah. So if you guys have any additional questions, please reach out. Um, hopefully what you guys have learned tonight um, and let us know if you've learned anything or the, your favorite tip is that there are so many positive reasons for starting your business. 100%. There are other reasons that you just need to navigate ca cautiously, but it doesn't mean that it's not doable. Um, there's more and more resources out there that you guys can really be successful with. Um, so reach out to us with any questions. Of course, we love to help therapists start and build their business. That's what we've been doing since 2019. Um, and yeah, so, um, you guys can do it. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Thank you, Steve and Jerry, um, Thank for you. being on and joining us. So Absolutely. talk to you all later. Bye-bye. Thanks.